This is something I, I picked up quite a while ago and I just hadn't made any time to make a video on it. But um, today what we're going to do is we're going to build ourselves like a nice rolling uh power supply like station like portable i want this so that if i'm anywhere i can plug into this and i can i can tap into whatever cars batteries we got and we can keep that charge whether it's tuning or if i'm out here in my garage and i got something i want to show you guys i can power it up i can use it i can use for my example so on and so forth so Without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this. Um, now, I kind of looked around and this seemed to be kind of the best charger around that was accessible, uh, especially at the time. I think they're, they're typically in stock. Um, let's go ahead and bust it out of this package here. So this is a Tar Amps smart charger. And this is the uh, the Smart Charger 200 amp, as you can see. Um, this is the first Tar Amps product I've owned of my own. But uh, let's go ahead and bust this thing open and check her out. See what's inside the box here. So first look at it. Of course, Tar Amps is infamous for sending you uh oh wow that's a that's a big one that's the big tar amps uh decal hopefully it wasn't messed up it looks a little crank but i don't typically use decals on anything anyway uh unless you guys are really trying to encourage me to uh, here is a now this is one thing that i did notice when i was looking at this that I think back in the day they used to sell these without the adapter so you had to make the connection and let's just go ahead and open it up this is uh you know our american 120 volt to i'm guessing that's how the brazilians uh plug is now this thing will do 220 and uh 120 voltage or 240 and 240 and uh 120 voltage so i'm not sure how things are in other countries but all right here's the charger itself and basically it kind of it, it really strikingly resembles their uh their amplifiers i mean if you didn't know no better, you walk up, you seen that sitting somewhere, you would think that that was their amplifier. So, go ahead and bust her out of the plastic. Now, the reason I got this, uh, they did have a bigger brother to this, and that was the Pro Charger. And I think, I forget what the amperage went up to maybe 300 amp or 250 but it was 220 volts only um and i didn't want to deal with that i wanted to be able to use one 120 so let's quickly take a look at that plug and like i said i'm not sure if this is a brazilian plug because we know they come from brazil if this is some type of European plug, I'm not 100%, but I am 100% that they do give you this uh, adapter now, and that just slides in. Boom, we're good to go. All right, uh, I will have to read the instructions to see how to change this if I wanted to operate this in the 220 volt range. So, let's go ahead and look. It does have on one end real quick. That's just your power standby key. Cool. It's got dual fans, which uh, they're pretty known for having their fans set up. Like, actually, whoa, it's got four fans. <laughs> okay, my bad. So, they're pretty known for having their good fan pieces. And then, let's go ahead and 
I got to get this off and see about this. Um, see if we can get a zero gauge ferrule inside of these units here. But let me go ahead and grab some Allen keys and then I'm just going to grab a zero gauge ferrule to see if it fits in here. The, this smart charger doesn't have the lip that protrudes out like the, um, like the amplifiers do. And there's a little trick to getting the regular zero gauge working the tar amps amplifiers, but this one is actually countersunk or counter beveled. So we might not have that issue. So give me a second. I'll be right back. All right. So here's a zero gauge ferrule and it just doesn't fit. It's like just too small. So I'm not sure if I can open that up a little bit to make it work, but that might be the ticket. Now you can fit zero gauge in there, zero gauge wire in there if you don't use a ferrule. Uh, maybe if I was to clamp it, maybe it would work a little better. This is two gauge and that fits in there, no issues, but uh, we don't want two gauge, we want zero. So, anyway, I just wanted to quickly show you this so that you have an idea of what we're going to be doing. And uh, let's go ahead and get to the rest of the materials we have in order to start processing making this car here. All right, so you see we got the charger. And they do recommend when you're using these smart chargers, at least uh, tar amps does, tear amps, however you want to pronounce them. Uh, they recommend that you use a battery in line with the smart charger. And I had went and picked up this AGM. This is a uh, H6 AGM battery. I did buy it used. I bought it from a fella um, not too far from here. And as you can see, the battery sticker on there is 225. So February of 2025, I can tell you right now, I just picked up this H7 over here from Costco the other day. If you guys see me online, I always recommend the H7 for, um, just uh, AGM battery in your vehicle, whether it's your front and back or front and back, uh, and then you do your lithium or however you wanna go. But let's take a look at this one real quick and you'll see that date is actually older. So this battery was purchased a week, maybe two weeks ago now. And it says 1224. Let's go ahead. You guys can see that it says 1224. So this battery is newer than this battery. Um, I did see the car that this battery came out of. Old retired guy. He was scrapping a car that uh, actually was Cadillac, but it had some pretty bad uh, computer issues with it. So he just gave up on it. And I scored this. I think I picked this up. If you guys haven't seen on my uh, on my Facebook, I always uh, sorry. If you guys haven't seen on my YouTube, um, I am one that advocates that uh, buying used equipment isn't always bad as long as you know what you're looking for. Um, you can typically get a decent deal. Some stuff you want to buy brand spanking new. Uh, this battery that's going in my truck, obviously. I bought it brand new, but the two lithium batteries that I bought to go along with, whether I use both of them or not, I bought those used at a really good deal. And then this one that's just gonna kind of not be dependent used in a vehicle, I picked this up used, and I think I gave them a hundred bucks or seventy-five bucks for it. So these batteries, brand new, wherever ever start is, I figured if that's uh, Advanced Auto. I think that's advanced auto. This is probably like a 200 and something dollar battery without taxes and without uh, core. This one here, 
just a quick plug, uh, as I'm always telling people, this cost me just about $200 out the door. It's about $170 without tax and um, battery core fee. So I do got to find a battery to bring them back because they get a $15 core for that. So anyway, let's go ahead and put this away and bust out the rest of this material. All right, so this was something else that I picked up from Costco. <laughs> you guys can tell I like Costco. Um, I didn't want to spend a lot of money on this. This is just a little hand dolly. Okay, now this one folds up. You may see Milwaukee makes one like this, and they wanted like 80 bucks for it. I wasn't going to do that. And then I didn't want a full-size dolly because, well, it's full-size, right? So this one folds out, and it's kind of got three wheels in the back, which is, I guess, cool for climbing stairs or whatever. We don't really need to worry about that. And the handle is collapsible. Um, once we get this set at the height we want it at, that's pretty much going to stay that way forever. But I do have to figure that out as we go along. So uh, let's go ahead and bust this off. So, um, then we're obviously going to need some wood because, I mean, I guess you could just strap your battery down on here, boop, however you do that, and then mount the uh, supply up here, however you do that, but we're going to make this a little better, and who knows, maybe this would be fine forever, or maybe later in line I'll have to make a different cart. This is my first time making a uh, portable power station. So um, I went over to Home Depot, another place that I love a lot. I'm there all the time. <laughs> I just picked up this piece of um, board. Now this isn't plywood, this is actually a sheet of board, or not a sheet, but what do they call it? This is actually a piece of board. And hey, it's from Brazil also, huh? It's going to be a match made in heaven for these guys. But this is like uh, 17 and a quarter wide by 48 inches. So four feet. Okay. And we're basically just going to make a couple cuts on this and uh, use that on here to mount the battery and to mount the charger. And then the last thing that I picked up other than the hardware was... A battery tie down now I went to a couple places to look for tie downs and um, this is one I've never seen this before not that I have to buy many tie downs but I got this here and it, at first it was kind of weird but I talked to the kid who worked there who's been selling me car parts forever uh, he just happens to be part-time now I haven't seen him in a while but it's a two-piece, and it just goes in, and it clips together, and it's fairly adjustable. So I did check it yesterday, and no, look at that. I did it again. It works, and we're going to go ahead and uh, put some inserts in here with some threaded rod, and then that way we can utilize this. Now, I did... Uh, the idea of my layout is going to be to accommodate two of these AGM batteries. And then also above that, I'm going to have a spot for a lithium if I decide to go that way. And when I say a lithium, I mean something small like the Down for Sound uh, 6.0 LTO. Uh, SX Power has their smaller, I forget the names of them. Big Jeff has his uh, smaller you know, the smaller lithiums that, like a sister batteries, assistance batteries, right? Um, we're not talking about the big, you know, not a big banks of C-Max or LifePo or uh, LTO. We're talking about the smaller ones. There'd be a spot that I can add one in there if felt necessarily down the road. So without further ado, let's stop yapping and let's go ahead and set the table saw up in a vacuum cleaner and let's go ahead and make a couple cuts real quick. 
so that we can start building this all together.